Okay, so before we get to integrals and antiderivatives, we'll learn another method for solving differential equations called Euler's method. So this is a technique for solving differential equations. Okay, and so first we'll kind of go over the idea of this and then what the algorithm is and then how we can just quickly do it on a computer. Okay, so let's say we had a function, or sorry, a differential equation, df dt equals four minus two t. Okay, let's say we want to draw what f is. Okay, so if I have f prime of t here versus t, let's say, can we draw f versus t? Right, and let's say that um, we know how to kind of draw functions given information about their derivatives, right? That's kind of what we learned uh, in the last couple chapters, right? We have this derivative, let's plot that. That'll tell us where our function's increasing or decreasing. That'll give us some good information about how to draw it and what that solution should look like. Okay, so if I draw the derivative, four minus two t, so that's one, two, three, four here, and one, two here, right? So at t equals zero, four minus two t is, oops, is zero. And then at t equals two, four minus two t is zero, right? So then my line goes a nice straight line like this. Okay, so this is my derivative. f prime of t equals four minus two t. Right? And this derivative tells us, sorry, I have a kitten who thinks that my uh, pencil is a toy. Right, so we have this derivative, right? And we can see, okay, for f prime, or for t less than two, it's positive. For t greater than two, it's negative. So that tells us that f is increasing for t less than two and f is decreasing for t greater than two, right? And that tells us that we have zero derivative at t equals two, and so we go from increasing to decreasing, we know that that means it's a local max. f has a local max at t equals two. But how do we draw this, right? Because we don't know the function f, right? All we know is its derivative. We're assuming we don't know how to take antiderivatives yet, so we don't even have an explicit formula for f. All we know is where it's increasing, where it's decreasing, and where it has local maximum. Okay, and this is kind of as good as we can do at this point, right? If we're given a starting point, that helps, right? So if we're given that f at time zero is equal to zero, then we know, okay, at zero, uh, let's do this in red. At zero, my function is zero right? And then I know it increases, and then at time two, it has a maximum, and then it decreases from there. So I know roughly it should look something like this, but I don't know a couple things, right? I don't know how high this max should be, right? Don't know where this max should be in terms of the y value, right? Right, and we don't really even know how much we increase f by in this region, right? Because we don't have a form for f as a function of t. All we have is this derivative information, that the derivative is four minus two t. So what we wanna do is we wanna leverage the fact that we know the derivative so that we can determine how much we should increase our function by in this part and then how much we should increase or decrease it by on the other parts right so we kind of want to step through say okay at zero i know the derivative is four so let's follow that for a little bit and then we'll check the derivative again and then follow that for a little bit check the derivative again and so on okay and so euler's method is what this is going to be and this is going to rely on something called the tangent line approximation okay so euler's method relies on the tangent line approximation. Right, so this was a topic that we didn't have time for in one of the other chapters, but it's 
a bit, it's simpler than it sounds, right? So if we have a function, f of t, if we zoom in to a particular point, we saw, remember, that the tangent line looks almost like the function, right? Where the function has its tangent slope, right? That's kind of where the slope is equal to the tangent line slope, right? And so really close to that point, the tangent line is a good approximation of the curve, right? So our function f of t at a point t0, the tangent line, right, has slope p prime, or sorry, f prime, tangent line 2f, at t0 has slope f prime of t0 and equation uh, we'd say let's call it t and let's make these x's just to make this nice and easy make this nice and separate function f of x at a point x naught f at x naught has slope f prime of x naught i just switched the x's to t's so that this tap capital t for tangent line approximation at x is going to be f prime at x naught times, you know, your point x minus the starting point plus f of x naught. Right, so this is just a, a line with the same slope as the function's derivative, right? Same slope as your function at that point, and then it's a straight line from there, right? So it intersects your, your curve at x zero, f of x zero, and that's just the, the slope equation. Okay, so let's let's kind of look at this. Um, in the graph. So here we have, in blue, I have my function for x minus x squared. So this is just some, some function, f of x. And if I look at the tangent line at a particular point, so let's say we take the point x equals zero, so x naught is zero. If I look here, this red dashed line, that's the tangent line to my function at this point, right? It has slope equal to the derivative of the function at that point. Right? And if you look at this uh, tangent line, close to this point, it almost looks like the curve. Right? As you get further away from this point, the curve you know, curves away from the tangent line. But close to this tangent, close to the point where we took this tangent line, the curve and the tangent line are almost indistinguishable. Right? If I zoom in here, we can see that the tangent line and the curve are basically right on top of each other. So if I want to kind of approximate my function near this point, I can use the tangent line, right? So if I want to find the function value at say 0 0.1, right? I can plug 0 0.1 back into this complicated function, but maybe that function is hard to do, or it's unknown like it is in the case where we're doing these differential equations, right? When it's unknown, then we'll use the tangent line approximation because we'll know the slope because that comes from our differential equation. And then we can follow that out to 0 0.1 and you can see that the tangent line and the function at 0 0.1 give a really, really similar value. So the tangent line gives you a good approximation of the function value near the point where you took the tangent. Okay, so let's switch back and kind of go over how this turns into a method for uh, calculating these uh, solutions to differential equations. Okay, so here we have, this is the slope or derivative of your function at x0, right? Here, we could call that delta x, right? Change in x. And here, this is our function value at a starting point. x0. So this tangent line approximation doesn't use anything about our function other than the derivative at a point and the value of the function at a point. It doesn't know anything else about the function. Okay, so we'll use this to make Euler's method. So Euler's method is a way for a technique to solve differential equations or really you're generating an approximate solution to a differential equation, okay? 
So let's say we have this function df dt is some function g of t. Right? So here we had 4 minus 2t is our function g. Right? So step one of Euler's method is to pick a step size, delta t. Right? So if we're doing this by hand, we might want delta t to be big. If we're doing it on a computer, we want delta t to be as small as possible. We'll get a really big solution, a lot of different values, but it'll closely approximate our function because the closer, right, the closer to our point of tangency that we take this tangent line, the better the approximation of our tangent line to our actual function, right? If we make our step size really big, like 0.5 over there in this example, then you'd see that um, the tangent line and the function are a lot more different at 0.5 than they were at say 0.1, right? They're pretty close together here. So this is gonna give you a better approximation every time. When your step size is bigger, you're gonna get overshoots or undershoots of your solution, okay? But the idea is, okay, pick your step size. Then for that step size, we're gonna step through our solution. So starting from the initial condition, Right? And so that reminds me that when I said the Euler's method is for solving dfdt is some function of, of time, we need f at time zero is some value. Let's call it f zero. Right? You need an initial condition to generate a solution. If you don't have an initial condition, then you don't know where you're starting and you can't actually generate a solution using Euler's method. Okay. So starting from the initial condition, f of zero equals f naught. We will use the tangent line approximation to determine or estimate f at zero plus delta t, right? Or f of delta t in this case, since we're starting at zero, okay? So what does that mean, right? The tangent line approximation says that f at zero plus delta t, right? We approximate that by the tangent line. The tangent line has slope f prime of zero times uh, t, right, minus t plus delta t, right? So here our t is zero and our delta t is that. So this becomes the delta t here. Let me write it out. 0 minus 0 plus delta t. Sorry. We go back to our tangent line. It's x, the point where we're doing the tan, uh, we're evaluating our tangent line approximation at x. The tangent was taken at x0. So in this case, it is, our point is 0 plus delta t minus the point where we took the tangent line and then plus f at 0. Right, so this is the tangent line approximation. Right, so this is t at delta t. Okay, and we're going to use that to approximate f at delta t. Okay, so f at delta t equals that. So let's write this out. So this gives us f at delta t is approximately f prime at zero times delta t plus f at zero. Okay, and so here's where we'll use the differential equation, right? df dt is g of t. So we have this information here. It's sitting right there. Let me make this blue. Right, the derivative is here. So all we have to do is plug in zero into that right-hand side equation, right? So this gives us f of delta t is approximately g of zero times delta t plus f at zero which is our initial condition, F zero, okay? So we have the initial condition, which was given. We have the differential equation at zero, so we just plug in zero into that equation to find the, the slope of this tangent line approximation, okay? And so that gives us our approximate value of F at our first time step, okay? And then from here, we are going to continue. So starting from a new point, so starting from first point, f at delta t, right? We'll use the tangent line approximation at this point at 
at f or at delta t, right, to determine or estimate f at the next step, f at 2 delta t. Okay, so let's write that down. f at 2 delta t is equal to f at delta t plus delta t, right? So then we use the tangent line approximation here. So the slope of this tangent line is f prime evaluated at delta t. Then this becomes delta t plus delta t minus delta t, the place where we took that tangent line, right? And then this is our 2 delta t, we're evaluating it, right? Plus f at delta t, which we found over here. So let's call this maybe f1. First point, f1 equals this, right? So let's call this f1. Right, the first, uh, you know, output from Euler's method, we'll call it f1. Okay, so then if we use all this information, right, then we say, okay, f2, we'll call it, which is f at 2 delta t is approximately f prime at delta t, right? So that would be our function g at delta t, where g comes from this differential equation here, right? So we just plug in this time point into that right-hand side equation to find the derivative of f at that point, which we use as our slope for our tangent line approximation. And then here, this becomes a delta t, and then we add f1, okay? So then that gives us f2 is g at delta t, delta t plus f1, okay? And then we repeat, repeat until we're done, or until we solved as far as we want. Okay, so then, you know, this, this general form would be f at time n plus 1, right, or step n plus 1 of my Euler's method, right, is going to be f at n delta t, which is approximately g at, uh, sorry, n plus 1 delta t, right, it's going to be our uh, differential equation, our slope, our derivative, at the step before. So g at n delta t times delta t plus f n, step n. Okay, and so this makes kind of a discrete time system that generates the solution to this differential equation, or an approximation of the solution to this differential equation. Okay, and so this is how it would be kind of mathematically. All right, and let's show what's going on here. Right, so let's switch over to uh, this one right here. So I have four minus two x is my equation here. Let's use a big step size. So for step size one, right, we start at zero, zero. We would compute the derivative here by plugging in one into four minus two x, or sorry, plugging in zero into four minus two x. And that would say, okay, we're going to have a line with slope four. Right? We're going to follow that out for a full step size of one. We're going to get to a new point, and we're going to call that f1, right? our function value after one step of Euler's method. Okay? Then we're going to go back to the function, plug this kind of time into our function, and find the slope of that function at this point. Use that to make a tangent line that will follow out for another time step. And then we check the slope again, follow that out for one time step, check the slope again, follow that out for a time step, and so on, okay? And so you can see as we make the step size smaller, we get a better approximation of the actual function. So here in orange is, is the, actual, the actual solution, and then in black are my Euler's method solution for step size, whatever. So for big step size, you can see we overshoot. As I pull that step size down, we get a better and better approximation of what's happening. So for step size 0 0.05, you can see that every time I take this tangent line approximation, I'm only following it for a short amount of time where it still agrees very nicely with my function. And so I'm actually able to capture this function quite good up, up until about here where they start to disagree, right? But I can get a pretty good approximation of the orange, the actual solution to this differential equation, right? Let's do a different one. Right, so here we have the function e to the minus x as my, uh, you know, my derivative, my differential equation is dy dx equals e to the minus x, okay? 
And so if I start with zero and the initial condition is zero, and if we follow out these uh, using Euler's method with step size 0.5, we say, okay, at zero, what's the tangent line slope? Okay, it's it's whatever it is. Let's follow it out for x, you know, delta x equals 0.5. That gives us my estimate of f at time 0.5. Then I take that tangent slope, follow that out for another half step, and keep going like this. And you can see that for 0.5, the shape is pretty good. It's kind of off by a bit, right? And as I pull that step size down, I get a better and better approximation of the actual solution in orange here. Okay, and so you can use this tool uh, to practice Euler's method. To do it by hand, you know, it, it's a bit more work, but but it's 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 not so bad. And so if you go to the problem solving session uh, from today, Monday, October twenty sixth, then you'll see uh, that we work through. I think this example we worked it through with uh, at least step size one and step size a half, right? And then you can use this tool to do step size, really small steps. Because when you do really small step sizes, this would take you forever to calculate all these by hand, right? When you do step size one or, you know, two, you know, in this window, at least, I, I've only done it four times. So it doesn't take that long. But if I really want to get good accuracy, I will have to do this approximation more times than I would want to write down on a piece of paper. So, so this is really a numerical method for, for a computer to handle. But it's important to kind of understand, you know, what's going on with this solution. Okay, so we'll stop here.